Yes, this is Divyanshu Vyas, uh, and this is the second part of the introductory session on uh, reservoir engineering from the very basics, from the very scratch. In the first part, we were talking about uh, porosity and different kinds of porosity, right? And uh, in the second part today, uh, and uh, right now, we will be discussing about permeability and how is it important, and why is it important, and what are the uh, various kinds of permeability and how does it determine the importance in reservoir engineering anyhow right so we were talking about uh, you know we were talking about an example of sponge you dip the sponge into water you take it out you crush it water drips out because some water was stored but why is it dripping out is not because of how it was stored it is dripping out because the sponge is allowing water to get out and get in right it's allowing something like a flow right it's allowing the injection and production it's allowing some form of streamlined flow in, in into it or somewhere we don't know what is that something called that property is called permeability and it's very important because what good is a reservoir rock or what good is a rock to a petroleum engineer if you cannot produce hydrocarbons of it it's just a sample in the laboratory ignored right you you won't consider any such rock so permeability is a very important phenomena normally people say that uh, permeability is proportional to porosity but uh, that is not uh, you know that's not a fundamental rule you know we will be talking about these things later and i'll give you examples where this thing can fail right a rock can be very permeable but very less porous a rock can be very porous but a very less permeable right so you know uh, a very common example is shale. Shales are very porous, by the way. If an interview asks you, uh, what is the, what do you call it, what is the uh, porosity comparison between uh, shales and uh, sandstones? Shales have higher porosity normally. Shales are very porous, but they are not permeable. And that's why shales are not as popular as sandstones are, right? So, permeability is, if I give you an example, This is a rock and I call it rock A, right? And this is another rock. This is another rock. This is just a second. This is another rock, right? And for clarity, I'll just color it a bit, right? So the portion in red is empty or maybe covered with some fluid, and not it's not it's not rocky, right? So very peculiar things now you will be able to understand in terms of porosity and permeability and why they are not always you know uh, proportional and what uh, is the difference between porosity and permeability right so this is rock a it's very porous you know one two three four five pores it's very porous but it's not what it's not permeable rock b maybe has lower porosity than rock a but rock b has higher permeability than rock a Right? So this is the fundamental importance of permeability, the fundamental definition of permeability. Talking about physics and dimensions, permeability has a dimension of L2. Its SI unit is meter square. It's in Darcy's law, the unit is the Henry Darcy law. It came into existence because of permeability. It is one Darcy or very popular in field units. It is milli Darcy and it will be discovered about permeability we'll be talking in further sections we'll be talking about darcy's law and this is the fundamental comparison of porosity permeability and the description thank you guys